Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, guys, Stacy and Chris with me. Hey y'all. Hello. And in today's class, we're going to be talking about the real Hebrew alphabet. Okay. For the last while here, I've been working to put together the evolution of the letters from Hebrew to English. Right. First, relying on the scripture for the source of the words. In other words, we found a Strong's concordance representation for each of these letters. Mm -hmm. And what we're going to find is some surprises here when we actually look at what these letters mean. And we're also going to get an understanding of how they evolved through history and why we don't have certain letters in our alphabet now. Okay. All right. So we'll come back to that chart. But the first thing we want to do is look at each of the individual letters. Like, for instance, the first one here, the first letter in the Hebrew alphabet, or what some people call the Aleph bet, turns out it's not an Aleph at all. The first letter of the Hebrew alphabet actually corresponds to Strong's number Hebrew 410 which has two letters and could be pronounced L or Allah or El and means God. So right quick, we understand that this is not truly a bull in the, what we see in the pictograph, right? but this letter actually represents the mighty one. And when you look down through the text here, this is, from the concordance if you were to go to the strong's concordance over at bible hub you would find this exact text here just in nice little neat tables of mm -hmm. course taking up a lot more room but you can read the same information about the letter you see that it was translated to power in the new testament notice that its usage is to denote god or gods often emphasizing the might and the power of these beings. Right. I think scripture speaks about the strength that's in a ox. So it seems to be befitting of what it actually means. Um, or the Using the strength. strength. Yeah. yeah. And it's important to understand, especially when you're reading the book of Exodus, um, when they made the offering to the golden calf this could have been part of the confusion is they actually thought this was a bull by the picture and not paying attention to what it actually meant all right but anyway let's look at the next one this is bayatha you see the symbols here of the word when you go to concordance number hebrew one zero zero four you actually see this word that represents this letter so you have ba ya ba mm -hmm. instead of bet so it's not necessarily the aleph bet because it's not an aleph an aleph is simply a bull right but it's not aleph it's allah mm -hmm. or ela something like that and it's not bet is by a thigh by saying bet you change the thigh to a ta right. so you change the whole word and so we're not necessarily studying the aleph bet or the alphabet but this would be more like stacy you want to pronounce it alabayatha the alabayatha mm -hmm. and so in this video we're talking about significant differences between this language, which some will call Alabayatha, and the Aleph Bet, the first being the symbols used. These are the pictograph symbols, the oldest symbols that they can find written in stone. And so that's one thing in this language or this system of learning the language. Another thing, like we mentioned, looking at what the word really is, like this one right here is gamala mm -hmm. instead of gamel, 
And we're also looking at the strongest meaning of the words and the usage and all of that to get a more original understanding of what the letter means. Like for instance, this one here, Gamala, which we were told it was Gamal, has nothing to do with a camel. Right. You see the definition there? To deal fully or adequately with, to recompense, to wean. You see the meaning there? To treat a person, benefit, requit, to ripen, to wean. Yeah. So notice how big of a difference that is if you've always thought that it was a camel. Right. This is actually a verb here. It's not a noun. It's a verb. And it has something to do with, with making things complete. Exactly. Or recompense. Right. The next letter looks quite strange here is the Dalata or what you would know as the Deleth. Mm -hmm. It actually does mean door. And like we said, we found a corresponding Hebrew word from the Bible that matches these letters. This one being Strong's number 1817, meaning something swinging, a valve of a door. Even the corresponding Greek is a door and its primary usage is a door. Mm -hmm. But notice how the symbols change over time. So you start off with this in the pictograph. This symbol here is the closest to what I could find in a character. All right. I had to use Segu UI Historic to get these characters, but it was the closest match, just tilted to the side. But notice how it's changed into a D. That one's a little difficult, but let's look at the next one. The Hawa. You probably thought I was going to say Het. Mm -hmm. The Hebrew word corresponding to the letter is Hawa'a. So, Hawa. Mm -hmm. And when you look down here, it actually is talking about a person. When you say Hawa'a went to the store, you're pretty much saying he went to the store. Yeah. And this symbol, of course, is a man with his hands raised. Then we have the sixth letter, Gematria number six. We see the Y. And this is where this gets really interesting because when we start to look at the other languages and wonder how they have different letters or additional letters, what we find is that even though they have additional letters, they don't have additional sounds. Right. Coming down to our table, we see that this one letter in the English can be represented by a W, a O, a U, or a V. And when you're looking at the alphabet, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z, U, V, W are all the same letter. It's right. the exact same letter. Just shaped different and used differently depending on your dialect. So you see the symbol started off like a hook. And that's why a lot of times they use a vowel sound for the Y is because it's tying two things together. So it's like a, it's like the and. Yeah, I think even in Spanish they use, well, they changed it to a Y shape, but they use the Y by itself as an and. Oh, good point. That's an excellent point. Maybe we should have included the Spanish here to add some insight on how we're going from this shape of a letter to these letters over here. Then you have the Zang. Strong's number 2177 means to feed, to provide, to sustain. Mm -hmm. Even its definition is to feed, to provide, or to sustain. Its meaning is to nourish a form or sort. And then notice this point right here when it talks about the corresponding Greek. It says that it can be found in the passages like Matthew 6.11. Give us this day our daily bread. So when you see that letter, and that's why it's important to understand this language. When you see this letter, you know that that's what it's talking about. Nourishment and sustenance. Not necessarily a weapon or a plow or something like that. Right. And again, that's why it's important to actually find each one of these letters in the Bible. So that we can allow the Bible to define the letters for us. Right. Without having to depend on outside sources. We see that particularly important when we get to the eighth letter, which would look like 
Chawat. Chawat. Mm -hmm. Means outside. Not necessarily a gate or a fence, but just the representation that you are outside of that gate. Right. Or you're outside of that fence. You're in the street, you're in the open place. So this would be like the opposite of the Bayatha. Mm -hmm. But notice here, this one is important because these cells are showing you how it evolved over time. Well, this particular letter evolved into the X. Our X in our alphabet doesn't point to the Tao or the Tav, but it is actually the Ch sound. Right. As in Choikoi instead of Exakoi or Zykoi. It's Choikoi. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of mix up between the Chet and the Het, especially when we see that they added additional letters to the Het and then kind of mixing up the Chet and the Het when they talk about it. Then the next letter is Tet. We see that it ended up being a T, mm -hmm. which is easy to understand, but this is a huge issue when we get to the current alphabet because they use this one interchangeably with Tau or Thav or... Lumping the two T sounds together. Lumping the two T sounds together. And what I found in my studies is that they assign the tau to the last letter in the hebrew alphabet leaving out the tet as if they have no tet in the latin the greek it was there all right you see they had the tau and then they had a theta mm -hmm. but then by the time you get to the latin you don't have both you only have one and what i found is that they're misassigning it see you have tav is t the 22nd letter but the T doesn't make the sound of Tav. The T makes the T sound. Of Tet. Right. And see here, you see it's assigning Tet the same T. Right. So the English alphabet may have 26 letters, but it doesn't have 26 sounds. Right. We started off with 22 sounds, and they've taken away two sounds and just combined letters. And so it makes a difference when you say the word or even understand the word Shabbat versus Shabbat. Again, you're taking the covenant out of the word when you say Shabbat. So instead of the covenant, you think of more of mud or mire, clay. Either something getting dirty or maybe it's referring to a clay pot, but I don't see how that could be with the Sabbath. That's why it's important to ignore the historical understandings of these. And a lot of times just use common sense, like when you come to tau and theta, mm -hmm. to understand how, do you, how we got the letters that we have today. Get in this class is the yard with the letters ya, da, yad, 10th letter, we found Strong's 3027 that represents the yad. And notice it's not an arm, but it's a hand. Just the hand, not the whole arm and hand as we see. As represented by the picture, but it's pointing more to the hand itself. And so, again, that's why it's important to find these words in the Bible and then look at what the definition is, how the Bible define these letters. Mm -hmm. And that's why we're calling it the... Alabayatha. 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 Instead of the alphabet, because it's different. Different symbols. Different pronunciations. And different understandings. Back to the original using the Bible as the source of this understanding, but it is quite different. So I noticed that the Latin does not have a J. The Latin had 21 letters opposed to 26. And when you look, you see that they don't have a shin or a thou, 
which would make 20 letters, and then they've duplicated the het or the Bahawa with this e looking character. Right. So essentially, they have 21 letters but 20 sounds. Okay. And while we're looking at this, you can see what happened when we got to the Roman. You had the addition of the C and the Y. But when you get to English, that Y has now expanded into a V and a W. Mm -hmm. So those are additions to the English alphabet, as well as the J. And we'll hear more about that as we progress through the letters. So let's go on. The next letter we see is the Kaf, or Boy. the Kafa. Mm -hmm. Gematria number 20. Now, this is one that we can easily find information on because we understand it to be a palm, and that's the traditional understanding of it, is that it's a palm. So they got that one right. Strong's number 3709. But one thing you can see here is how the Paleo Hebrew changed to the English letter, how close they are. Right. That was part of what they did when it was getting the pictographs out of the language is they flipped them and reversed them, turned the letters sideways in order to try to hide them. Like you can see that when we're looking at the Lamada or the Lamid going from a shepherd's crook to an L. See that they rotated at 180 degrees and then removed part of the crook to make it more of a right angle. But notice that Lamed means to learn. It's actually a verb that means to learn. So that's what we're getting out of these. Whereas before you thought it was just a crook or a gold or something like that, that's just the symbolism of it. But the letter itself means to learn, a verb meaning to learn. Right, learning, teaching, instructing, just as the shepherd does with the crook to the sheep. Yeah, so when we see this letter in words like Lamech or Lilith or Lazarus, we understand that there's some type of lesson in those. Right. Now, the next one is Mem, which is a noun. We found the word Mayima, Strong's number 4325, that represents this letter. The definition of it being water. And you see this word used a lot. Um, like you see here, used with chaos, talking about like the chaotic nature of the water. Right. And there's also the reference that we have with Moses' name, using the mayim at the beginning in reference to how he was put in the water, how he was taken from the water. Then we have the Nawana. What others would call none. We found Hebrew number 5125, which would be like Nawana, which means to increase or continue. It is also a verb. Right. And in the pictograph, it's referencing a germinating seed. Right, and or some have it as a snake. Hmm. But the seed makes more sense when it's talking about increase. Right. And that shows the importance of finding these words in the Bible. Because without the definition coming from the Bible, one can argue that that's actually a snake. Right. And then start to find a meaning for the snake in there. Yeah. Right. It says the Hebrew usage of the word, nah, of the verb none nah, primarily conveys the idea of per perpetuation or continuation. And that just um, further illustrates when it's talking about the increase or proper gating. That's the importance of having it at the end of our master's name, I believe. Mm -hmm. Point to continuation opposed to an end. Now, the next letter up is the Samar. The word is not Semak, but actually Samar. All right. That's a little bit of Yiddish. We'll see in most words, they change the resh to a kaf or a chet. Mm -hmm. But when we see the words or the word that makes up the letter, it's sandwich, mem, and resh. Right. It is a verb means to support. Now we understand this one to be support, mm -hmm. 
But notice the difference if you think of this as being a verb opposed to a noun or a noun opposed to a verb. Because when you think of it as a noun, you're thinking of a crutch or a cane. Something you can lean on. Right. Well, a verb means more of to uphold or support something. Where you become that, that support. Then that or that crutch. Right. Big difference. It's almost opposite. Mm-hmm. The corresponding Greek is to rest upon or to rely on. So it's not saying something that we have somebody to rely on as much as we are supposed to be somebody to rely on. Right. Supposed to emulate him. But notice here how you get the S out of this symbol. Can you see how you progress to an S? Yeah. You can see that they took the... I guess the spine out of the middle. And that note that if they hadn't took the spine out of the middle and left it there, what would you have? A dollar sign? A dollar sign. Hmm. A little bit of insight brings us to the next letter, which is the I-N. And this one is a commonly known one. You know, a lot of people know about the I-N, Strong's number 5869, with the letters I-N, Yod, and Nawana. It's a noun. And it means eye or sight, appearance. And you can see the eye in the symbol. It is simply an eye. But you see down there, it says eye in can refer to the spring or fountain, emphasizing the idea of something that, that flows or emanates. When you see that also in the master's name, Yahweh Shawan. Mm -hmm. But notice how it's changed to an old looking thing there. It's actually the O in English. The reason why is because of the Omega in Greek. Hmm. And so they attributed, well, changed it to the Omega. And so it started to carry an O sound instead of an I sound. And so it became our O. Um, no, it's more about the symbolism. It became an O because of the shape of it. Because the omega, when you when you transliterate it back, goes back to the wa. Okay. No worries about it though, because it didn't make it into the Latin, the Roman, or the English. The omega was just a Greek symbol. Mm. One of their additions, along with this e-looking symbol, which also represents the hawa or the h. With that one, they had 24 letters with the Omega. But, again, the, the Omega didn't go forward. Lost it all together. So, when you say Alpha and Omega, the Omega is not really in any other. It's not in our alphabet at all anymore. <laughs> but anyway, the next letter to talk about is... The peha with the sounds pa and ha. So paha. Definition of it is mouth. The meaning is the mouth, edge, portion, side, or according to. Primarily refers to the physical mouth of a human or animal. It is used to denote the organ of speech or consumption. So speech or consumption. You see the background, not only was it speech, but an expressions of one's inner thoughts or intentions. Again, these definitions, finding the biblical definitions, we get way more out of, you know, these letters than what we were told. Like this one has the pictograph of a man laying on its side. But when we look at the Bible to find a definition, we find Strong's number 6662, which is... Tis the yeek. <laughs> this is the one they call to save. Them. Right. But it means righteousness or just. It means righteous or just. It is actually an adjective, not a noun, a man laying on its side, but it's describing this man and his righteousness. Right. Corresponding Greek translates to righteous or just. It says in the background in ancient hebrew society righteousness was not merely a personal attribute but a communal expectation but notice the symbolisms here notice it ended up as the letter f in the alphabet hmm. now this is unique 
you guys. But let me show you. When you come down here and you look in at the Greek alphabet, you have a lot of variations with this P at the beginning. So in the Greek, you have a pi, a phi, and a psi. Right. There's your pi, there's your psi, and your pi. Mm -hmm. So what they did was they combined the pi and the phi because the name of the letter itself is paha, or what we would say is ph. So when you put ph together in English, you get fa. So you have the representation of both sounds in the pi and the phi. So those two are combined in there, leaving you with the psi, which is this one. So there's your pi, phi, and psi transliterated from the Hebrew letters paha or pe and to save. I'm, not, I'm gonna have to practice on that one. So there's where your F comes from. And when you come back and look at the letter, you can see how you're getting an F from the paleo. All right. Now, the next one we want to look at is the Kodesh, which is an interesting name. Think of Rosh Kodesh. Raha Kadesh. Its name means to make holy, sanctify, consecrate, which explains why a lot of these words has been hidden. Some of them we can find real easy, like a cough, but when you try to find the cough in the Bible, it's very difficult because it's so obscure and hidden until you actually get down to Strong's number 6942. And then you understand why. We have a letter that means to consecrate, sanctify. And we're going to see a lot of that at, here at the end of the alphabet, even taking some of the letters out completely. But notice that this symbol actually looks like a sunrise or something. Mm -hmm. That's important to note because it is during the celestial event, some people call it the pole shift, that the whole world will go through the sanctification process. All right. And I noticed that when I started looking at these letters and you go from support to insight to communication to righteousness to sanctification to sanctification then you have resh which also means head or top beginning or leader the word is easy to find in the bible 7218 rosh would be pronounced ra'asha 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 beginning ruler the usage primarily denotes head and we can see how we get the r out of that but the next one is shin which is one of the first letters that was deleted from the Latin alphabet. These letters that have like a CH, a TH, and an SH that had trouble with them. We saw what they did with the CH. I guess they couldn't get rid of it all together, so we see it as an X now. But when it comes to the SH and the TH, those letters are missing altogether. There's no representation in our language or even in the Latin for the shin or the thou. There is in the Bible, Strong's number 8127, which means tooth. And if you think those are some funny looking teeth, I had to think about it, why they look like rabbit's teeth. Mm -hmm. But it's actually a side profile of the teeth. Smile. See, the teeth look like that, but when it turns to the side, see, it look more like that. Right. So it's a side profile of his teeth. Now, this could represent teeth, but you see down there, metaphorically, it could symbolize strength, power, or the act of devouring or destruction. And we saw that a lot, as seen in various poetic and prophetic passages. And that's one of the main things we wanted to do in this video is display these so people can pause them and actually read all they wanted to find out about these letters as the Bible defines them. And so you can find out everything you want to know about the Tao, because it's coming from Strong's number 8420 with the two letters thou and wa meaning sign mark and so this will be one of the reasons why it will be left out of the alphabet is they're actually leaving this mark or this sign out of the alphabet this covenant 
out of the alphabet and you think a lot of the words they even change like bayith to bet it changes the meaning of the word All right. took a lot of effort to change the meaning of those words even deleting the whole letter out of the alphabet altogether but I just wanted to share this with you again guys uh, go back read through the letters and get a uh, meaning understanding of the letters some of them are going to be significant differences in what we've been taught all of these years but the purpose is to learn it so we can teach the children they're the ones who got to get this so as long as we tell them the truth they won't have to worry about trying to sort through all of the lies right in the meantime, you guys leave us a comment if you've got anything out of it. If you can add anything to the discussion, um, please include it below. If you would like to get any of this information, um, um, let us know. We can motivate Chris to put it in the store somewhere, maybe in a PDF file or something that we could print off. I personally have it on my walls in the house. Mm -hmm. Each one of these uh, 24 pages have them printed out and displayed for the kids to read and the adults to read too. But also we can... Learn about these letters, getting back to the origin. Right. So, with that, we're going to say Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.